We are back for our first episode of 2022. We are making a roasted pepper soup. Now this can go a ton of ways. What we're making today is a very minimalist version. You only need a handful of ingredients and most of the recipe takes place in the oven. So you can just kick back and relax. The only ingredients you'll need are walnuts or cashews, red or orange bell peppers, yellow onions, smoked paprika, and feta, plus it's brine, big little staples, oil, and salt. So I just added one cup of hot water to one cup of chopped nuts. Today I am using walnuts, which are kind of uh, earthy and bitter in a really nice way that I think is the perfect offset to sweet bell peppers. You could also use cashews if you have those around, you like those. Basically, we're just looking for a soft nut because it is just getting soaked. Eventually it's gonna get blended and it's gonna turn into this uh, silky, gorgeous nut milk that is gonna add a lot of uh, flavor, smoothness, richness to our soup. A lot like cream, but it has a ton more flavor, which I love. So while these are hanging out, we are going to start chopping our bell peppers. Obviously for our roasted pepper soup, we don't need a lot of bell peppers. I am using red today, which I think is the uh, preferred pepper in a roasted pepper soup. But when I was testing this, I went through a like uh, spree where I could only find orange bell peppers. So I was like, okay, I'll just use those, but you know, obviously red is better. But when we did the orange, it was this very cool orange, kind of like pumpkin-y, it's like ultra, ultra cozy color, which I think is really nice for winter. So uh, pick your own pepper adventure if you want. Red or orange, it doesn't really make a difference flavor-wise. Soup is usually the thing that I make when I'm feeling very lazy. And like, I just need something easy and nourishing and filling. So we are going the lazy route today. Instead of using jarred peppers, or instead of doing whole ones and then peeling them one by one, we're just chopping them. We're just treating it like any other roast vegetable. That's it, we're basically done. I'm not worrying about obsessively even cuts here. You do want them to be roughly even, this way they cook evenly, but it's all getting pureed anyway, so don't obsess over it down to the last centimeter. Now I have two sheet pans. Dividing them means that they're gonna have more surface area. This is gonna encourage much better browning, which means more flavor. So, the recipe calls for six bell peppers and three medium yellow onions. Today I am using four because mine are a little small. Basically you just want one and a half pounds of onion. Now, I know this seems maybe a little bit high in proportion to the bell peppers. It's bell pepper soup, not an onion soup, but if you have been here to Big Little Recipes before, you know how much I love onion. I can't get enough onion. I don't think you can get enough onion. It is savory, but also mild at the same time. Sweet, it's everything you want. And it's not only adding a deep flavor to this soup, because they're roasting in the oven with the peppers, they're gonna get kind of browned and caramelized and just very yummy. But it also adds body. So the soup is mostly just roasted pureed vegetables. Okay. Woo, just started to cry. We're done, perfect. I am going to divide up our onion with our bell peppers. <laughs> it's a vegetable soup. The vegetables need the fat. I'm using olive oil. 
not your most precious olive oil, just something that you like the taste of, but it doesn't have to be super expensive because it's going in a hot oven. Now, salt, one of the rare times I will say, do go lightly here. We'll see why very, very soon, but for now, just trust me and go just like that. Lightly, just a little pinch. And most important ingredient, smoked paprika. Do you smell it? It's good in there. Yeah. Do you smell that? Mm -hmm. It smells amazing. If you only have a, another type of paprika, like um, hot or sweet, something that's not smoked, it'll be fine. It'll be fine, but I do recommend the smoked here. It kind of underscores that like roasted pepper vibe and it just adds a ton of depth to this soup that we only need a couple things for to begin with. So I'm doing two teaspoons on each sheet tray. Yum, do you smell it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I'm just gonna toss it all together with my hands. Okay, Justin, can you drizzle some olive oil on each sheet pan, just a little bit? Yeah, go, go, go. Basically, okay, what I was feeling was that the sheet trays were just a little bit dry, the spice was a little bit like pasty. I want them to feel like they're being shortchanged or like they're gonna have like a tough time in the oven. Everyone should be very moisturized and have enough oil to kind of sizzle in. That is just going to get us better browning, better flavor, better soup. Our bell peppers and onions are gonna be roasting for 25 minutes. Then we are going to check in with them and introduce them to a new friend on their sheet pan. In the meantime, this is a perfect time to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get even more big little recipes. Okay. Our peppers and onions have been going. They are softened starting to get a tiny bit of color. I'm going to give everyone a good shuffle to make sure that they cook evenly. And in the spirit of that, when you get these back in the oven, do a switcheroo from all angles. So top to bottom and then front to back. That's just gonna kind of make up for any hot spots in your oven and give every pepper and onion its fair shot. Okay. Mmm, can you smell that? It smells so good. The smoked paprika is doing so much hard work here. Now, we are at, I would say, maybe the most exciting part of this entire very easy, very lazy roasted pepper soup which is our feta. Wow. Wow. Okay. So I have a little over four ounces of feta here. I'm just gonna give it a quick dry. Now make sure you get feta that is in brine because that's gonna come in handy later. But if you were at the market, and you just can't find feta in brine, that's okay. We will have a fix for that too. But if you can find the brine, get it. I find the cheese is a little bit more intense in flavor. And that is just gonna make an even more awesome soup. So I scooched my vegetables over. I am adding the feta down and we're just gonna give it a little drizzle with oil and make sure that both sides are coated. Okay. And that's it. Now we are going to get this back in the oven for another 25-ish minutes until everything is super soft, super charred, 
super flavorful. Gorge. So you can see our vegetables are charred in a bunch of places. They feel very soft and mushy in a nice way. So while those are hanging out for a second, we are going to make our nut milk. Now, this is where the feta brine really gets to shine. I am using half a cup. Now, if you bought feta that did not have brine or it does not have enough brine, a couple options here. If you are feeling like an overachiever, which maybe you are, new year, new you, you can mix like a cup of cold water with like a teaspoon of kosher salt. Add that to a container with the cheese, let it hang out for a day or two, and you will end up with a cheesy feta brine mixture. So we have our soaked nuts. I'm just going to pour this right in. This is doing double duty. It's gonna help us get a nice, smooth, silky nut milk, but it is also going to impart that um, cheesy, that kind of umami flavor. Nice and silky. Looks just like store-bought nut or oat milk, or honestly, cream. Now we are just going to add our peppers and onions. bench scraper. It would be used for like a pastry context, but I often pull it out even more for situations like this where I have a bunch of usually vegetables that I'm trying to get from one place to another. It's kind of like a um, vegetable shovel. Make sure you get all that yummy oil on there too. That is a ton of flavor. I know, you're thinking the blender is really full. And you're right, but it's gonna be fine. It's just gonna be like uh, reaching its fullest potential. Now, the texture and consistency, that's all up to you. If you want a soup with a little bit more um, coarseness, something a little bit more rustic. Just stop it earlier, that's totally cool. So our peppers, onions, our feta, our nuts, all of these are coming together very beautifully. This is like at the point that it's basically a puree. We're not looking for a puree there, we're looking for soup. So this is where water is gonna come in handy. like a cup-ish. Now, a lot of recipes, a lot of soup recipes, they will say like stock over everything, stock over water. I don't buy it. I don't think that we need stock here. I don't think we need chicken stock. I don't think we need vegetable stock. We have so uh, much awesome vegetable matter. It can totally carry its own weight. The cheese is helping out. The feta brine is doing a lot of work. So. If you're thinking water is gonna make our soup bland, it's not, it's just gonna get us to the right texture. Okay. I'm gonna get a spoon and give this a little try. You can see much nicer consistency here. The water also helps smooth out any of those lumps that we might not have wanted. I think we need more water. And I think we need more salt. Do we have more feta brine? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I was gonna add water and salt, but why would I do that when I have more feta brine? So I am just going to add, I'll just add the rest of it. I'll just add the rest of it, it's fine. And then we will see how that does. Hold tight. Don't let soup splash onto your ceiling. No one wants to clean it up. 
I'm gonna have you try it. You tell me. I do think it needs something, but I don't wanna be the one to say it. Uh, you're gonna say salt, I think it's great though. Do you really? Yeah. You really do? Mm -hmm. You actually think that? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah, I think it's great. Okay. Sure. Okay. Do you think it needs more water? No? No. Okay. So, exciting thing. We have like two quarts of soup here. My favorite thing in the world. We have a giant deep freezer in our basement and I'll make a big batch of soup and maybe you'll have a couple cups for dinner or lunch or whatever the nearest meal is. And then just like freeze the rest of it in pints or quarts and then in a month, or two months or three months, whenever you are not feeling well or you need a little pick me up, you have homemade soup at the ready. You could top this soup with absolutely nothing, or you could play around with the ingredients that we already used. I like just a really simple drizzle of olive oil. If you wanna take it a step further, you could sizzle some olive oil on the stove, stir in some paprika, do like a paprika oil on here, that would be lovely. You could do toasted walnuts if you want crunch. You could do crumbled feta. You could roast more feta while you're roasting the vegetables and then crumble some of that on top. You could do a mix and match. But before you do any of those things, do try it as it is. It is so beautiful in its simplicity. There is so much smoky, roasty flavor. It really just uh, screams roasted pepper to me. And it feels very uh, nourishing and comforting when it's really cold and wintry outside. Can't wait to hear what you think about it. And I will see you soon for another Big Little Recipe.